as much as I love talking about these uh these albums and the songs I like on them, I like to hear from you guys yeah. and the callers that call in. Oh, matter of fact, we have a call coming in right now. Hey, what's your favorite uh, Paramore album? Can you repeat? <laughs> um, what's what's your favorite Paramore album? The Paramore album. So brand new eyes is Paramore album number three following up Riot. If you were here for the last video, you already know what Riot is. If you're a normal human being, you already know what Riot is. And if you know what Riot is, you're gonna know what brand new eyes is. Because there was so much pressure leading up to them creating this album from Riot and all the praise that it got that they were like, okay, we're kind of nervous, I'm gonna be honest about like how people are gonna look at brand new eyes in comparison to Riot, which makes total sense. That's always a thing with new artists. But they did not have to be worried about that at all because it is a fucking masterpiece. And Julia Connie, um, a writer for Absolute Punk at the time, wrote a review about Brand New Eyes saying that simultaneously down to earth and on top of the world, there's something about this Williams character that makes an album like Brand New Eyes more than another notch on that bitchy pop rock bedpost. Just imagine what will happen when this band hits their mid 20s. Now I'm gonna call it a Gaslight album, that's because it manipulates your emotions so heavily with the track listing, because you go into the CD and excited for the new Paramore album, and the first thing that hits you is careful. And it just fucking hits you, like a train. And you're just like, bro, that was so fucking hot. Maybe after this song, I can rest a little bit. Nope, ignorance, right away, bam. you constantly like that throughout the rest of the album all the way until track six when you hit the only exception that's the only time where it allows you to settle down for a little bit you know just take a listen my my relationship with the only exception started when I was about 14 or 15 getting ready for school and on MTV jams you would have the music video for the only exception come on at least twice throughout during the hour that I was getting ready for school. But then right after that, it throws you right back into the energy with feeling sorry. And you're back like, oh shit, okay, okay, we're back in, we're jamming out, we're doing our thing. And you're kept at that up pace for the next three tracks. One, two, three tracks. You're going, you're moving, you're shading, and it brings you right back down with Misguided Ghosts. You listen to Misguided Ghosts, you feel the emotion throughout the song, you're feeling it so heavy, it's great, and you're calm, and then all of a sudden after that, she ends it with a... Between Riot and Brand New Eyes, they were also working on the songs for Twilight. So Decode and I Caught Myself, both also great songs that came out during this period. I'm not going to forget about those guys. Now before I finish this video, I got a question in my last, in my last video. I received a comment question, which was fucking awesome. So already, obviously, I talked about it in my last video about Riot, and that's the live performance for Let the Flames Begin, which took place at the 2014 Reading Festival. Yeah, about two weeks prior to that performance, she was actually sick. She fell ill um, to exhaustion and a chest infection. So this is her getting over that. Like I said, this is, so I was on the 15th, and I believe the Reading Festival was on the 22nd. So maybe that's like, that's like a week, maybe a week and a half that she had to get over that. And she put on a fucking performance like that. It just completely wears herself out. The band matches and everybody's just so exhausted and just dead after that. And they do three more songs and it's fucking incredible. That whole festival in general is just my favorite Paramore performance ever. A lot of my favorite performances take place during 2014 like self-titled blue hair Haley era because I just feel like it's a well-aged um, performance now my second favorite comes from the same festival the 2014 Reading Festival it's when they performed the only exception but the entire sound system went out um, so all three of them sat down on the stage and performed the only exception to a crowd with no nothing going on in the background just the crowd and them just sharing a moment and it is beautiful. 
I can't really drop a five because there's really three performances in particular that really stand out to me without me kind of, you know, just going through every performance, just scanning, scanning. Um, if I do come up with another two, I will make sure to come back to the question. But for right now, I have a top three and my third favorite. Again, this is in no order. If I didn't say it before, then not again. This is in no order. My third favorite performance um, is That's What You Get. And that took place at the BBC Big Radio Festival in 2011. And that's because that's a performance that I feel like she played with that song the most. And the way she starts the second verse goes so fucking hard. Where she like kind of played... Every bridge I ever, she just fucking punches the shit out of me. And then just like, ah. That's how I feel watching live Paramore performances on YouTube. Ah, ah. But yes, brand new eyes, please listen to it. I cannot say it more and listen to the entire discography. Don't forget to follow, comment, subscribe, share, and stuff. And I will see you guys next time.